Hey everyone, Dr. Nussi from EasyDOTPhysicals.com and today we are going to look at two research studies and also a quote from Quest Diagnostics to try to determine how accurate hair testing is for THC specifically. How accurately can hair testing detect if THC is in your system? So we're gonna look at two recent research studies and also a quote from one of the largest drug testing companies in the country, Quest Diagnostics. Before I get into study number one, if you are concerned about an upcoming drug test for THC specifically, please check the description of this video. I've got two links, one to my preferred home drug tests. These are essential if you want to know your levels before going in to take an official test and also our absolutely 100% free masterclass where we teach you how to be best prepared to pass an upcoming THC test. And as always, thanks to all the members of this channel. Okay, so study number one, I've got pulled up here on the screen. This is comparison of cannabinoids in hair with self-reported cannabis consumption in heavy, light, and non-cannabis users. And this is a fairly recent research study from 2016. So one thing to note right off the bat is this is self-reported cannabis consumption. The researchers did not actually force feed cannabis and know the exact amount into these participants. They just filled out a little survey saying how much they use. Unfortunately, with certain substances, like think of alcohol and cannabis is another big one, people can sometimes tend to overestimate kind of like they're bragging a little bit about how much they actually use. So we do have to take that into consideration. But it is a fairly large study. Let's look at how the study was performed. All right, so down here under methods and self-reported cannabis consumption, the participants were asked to report the frequency of cannabis use. Participants had never tried cannabis or last used cannabis more than three months ago. So people that just don't use cannabis, THC, were classed as non-users. Based on the frequency of cannabis consumption in the last three months, the remaining participants were categorized as light cannabis users, which means they used up to weekly or heavy cannabis users, which use daily or almost daily. So again, there's a pretty broad spectrum between the light and the heavy users. There's no moderate user. Another kind of maybe flaw with this study, it'd be nice to see if maybe if you were using just on the weekends, like two days a week, uh, what this would look like as well. But again, this is what we have. The light users who use up to weekly and the heavy users who use daily. All right, and then we will skip all the way down here to the results, and I've got it highlighted again, of those who reported heavy cannabis use. So these are the daily users. 77% or 20 of 26 tested positive for THC, which when I first read this really kind of blew my mind. So there's a quarter, a 25% basically, or I, I guess a 23% chance that you are going to pass a hair test even if you use daily. That's kind of crazy. So it only caught 77% of the heavy users. But here's what's even crazier. In contrast, only 15 or 39% of the 38 light users tested positive for THC. So if you only use maybe once a week, there's only about a 40%, a 39% chance that you're going to test positive on a hair test. Again, this really, really uh, blew my mind when I first read it. And again, none of the 41 non-users tested positive. So that is study number one. Let's see if we get similar results in study number two. All right, so we have our second study here, cannabinoid concentrations in hair from documented cannabis users. And I will just, I've highlighted it, so I will just read the highlighted sections. 53 head hair specimens were collected from 38 males. So 38 male participants in this study with a history of cannabis use documented again by a questionnaire. So another potential weakness of this study is this is self-reported cannabis use. So the subjects completed a questionnaire indicating daily use or non-daily use, which was one to five 
cannabis cigarettes per week. So this would be more like what I was talking about before in the other study, something that they didn't have was more of a moderate use. So they called it non-daily use, but one to five cannabis cigarettes per week. That's kind of like a weekend user. So what are the results? So down in the results, the detection rates were significantly different between daily cannabis users. So if you use daily in this study, you were caught about 85% of the time, still a 15% chance that it was not detected for whatever reason. Again, something that I figured this would be much higher, even though that it is a high number, 85%, I understand. And non-daily users, so again, more like that moderate type of user, about 52%, which kind of gels with what we saw in the last study, which was 39% of up to weekly users tested positive. So this is actually a little higher than that. All right, so if we kind of combine these two studies together, if you are a daily user, you're going to get caught with a hair sample about something like 80% of the time. So 80% of the time, if you use daily, it's going to show up in a hair sample. If you use like on the weekends, a couple few times a week, it's going to be like 50-50. And if you just use every once in a while, like up to once a week, you're probably more than likely not going to test positive on a hair sample, something like 40%. All right, and I've got, again, one more piece of information. This is from Quest Diagnostics, and I will quote it here. Again, I've got it highlighted kind of giving us the reason or the rationale to use a hair test uh, over other types of drug tests. So here's the quote. One of the standout benefits of hair drug testing is its sensitivity and long detection window of up to three months of prior drug use. Because of this, hair testing is often, often referred to as a lifestyle test. However, that long look back window is not necessarily the best way to detect a single instance of drug use in scenarios like post-accident testing. Instead, hair testing is more informative of repeat pattern of drug usage during the broader detection window. The detection of a single drug use event is complicated by extremely small percentage of the total dose incorporated into the growing hair during that single use event. All right, so what this basically means is that hair testing is best used to find a pattern of use, somebody that uses chronically over a long period of time, but it's very weak, it's not good at detecting a single use. So if you just wanna know, did somebody use this past weekend or potentially are they intoxicated right now, hair testing is not the right test. So because of the small amounts of metabolites that potentially get left in the hair, a single use typically will not show up on a hair test. And also because hair has to grow a little bit before the metabolites can be deposited in it, if you use just recently to a drug test, like two or three days before, the hair test will also probably not pick that up. So it's not very good at detecting if somebody is currently intoxicated or a single use, but it is more kind of a roadmap looking back at a broad uh, use pattern of a specific drug. So it's very different from like what you're gonna use a saliva test or a blood test for. All right, so I hope this was helpful and informative. Again, check the link in the description box below for all of the ways that we help people be best prepared for upcoming THC tests. And until next time, stay safe.